Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a sponsored review of Matrix AI Network. In the spirit of transparency, Matrix is not in my portfolio. Quick reminder to everyone watching, if you haven't hit that like button or that subscribe button, please do so. Also, if you haven't heard, myself and a bunch of other awesome content creators like Crypto Lark, Crypto Zombie, um, Danny from Crypto 99, Heidi from Crypto Tips, and a bunch of others are collaborating on a crypto newsletter. We recently released the first issue for free. I'll leave the link down below. If you like it and you want to subscribe for it monthly, you can do so right on the same website. My normal friendly disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor. All investments have inherent risk and please always do your own research. All right, let's get started. Matrix launched in 2016 and presents itself as an intelligent blockchain 3.0 platform and combines blockchain technology with artificial intelligence. It is an open source project that uses a range of machine learning tools, also known as artificial intelligence, and uses them coupled with smart contracts, making them easier, safer, and even faster to use. The project's goal is to solve the biggest current issues that we have with blockchain, which is scalability, ease of use, security, and interoperability. Up next is the team. Stephen Dang is the chief AI scientist. He received a PhD degree in electrical and computer engineering from Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 2006. His research includes machine learning, industry data analytics, and computer architecture. He's authored over 50 papers, and he wrote a textbook that is used in many universities. Bill Lee is the chief network architect. He is the leading communications and IC design expert. He has been and continues to be a major contributor to China's 4G and 5G standards. Dr. Lee's work on communication IC design has won numerous national awards. His book, Communication IC Design, was the best-selling textbook in its field and is currently used by many prestigious universities. Onto the ICO. The ICO ended with the complete success of raising a total of 13,227 ETH through 212 transactions. The ICO started and it ended on January 17th. The United States and China, as usual, were not permitted to be a part of the ICO. The project is initially an ERC-20 token, which means that it runs on the Ethereum network for now, until their mainnet goes live, at which time they're going to support a token swap. Among the 1 billion MAN tokens, a total of 150 million were sold in the ICO. The remaining 850 million tokens are reserved for the following purposes. 10% retained by the foundation for the founders, directors, advisors, early backers, management, and community initiatives. After the matrix blockchain is deployed before the end of 2018, the rest of the tokens will be distributed as follows. 22% will be issued in subsequent sales as an additional token sale. 40% is reserved for mining rewards. 15% is allocated to the foundation as management and sales incentives for grants and scholarships to support R&D. Assigning 25% of the total tokens to the team is a little high, but you have to consider that they're also using this to create a foundation for the ongoing development of the platform. They want it to grow and develop well after the initial launch. Also, this is the first time I've seen money assigned for grants and scholarships. Investors will be able to purchase 35% of the tokens. That's a little low, but you also have to factor in the fact that miners get 40% of the tokens available to them. This results in 75% of the total tokens being made available to the investors who supported the project. I read on Reddit that the community was a bit frustrated because it seems there was no cap in how much one individual could buy during the public sale, and some people felt like others got a leg up or were able to get more tokens from the sale than others, and it seemed a little unfair. On to the technology. The current circulating supply is 150 million tokens, and the eventual supply will be 1 billion. Matrix has implemented a unique hybrid proof-of-stake and proof-of-work consensus mechanism. The proof-of-work is performed in a significantly smaller network of delegates, which are selected with a randomly distributed voting algorithm. The probability of a node to be selected is proportional to its proof-of-stake. The winner delegate shares the proof-of-work reward with the other nodes in the cluster. Matrix has two types of master nodes, which they also call super nodes. A mining master node, which requires a deposit of 10,000 MAN tokens and requires your hardware to have a processing power to run 1,000 transactions per second. Also note that mining can be done easily via Matrix's own mining hardware. The second is a validator node. It requires a deposit of 100k MAN tokens and requires your hardware to have the processing power to run 2,000 transactions per second. Both nodes will be randomly selected each 10 minutes to an hour, ensuring a truly decentralized and fair network. Matrix token holders can also contribute computing power to the AI server. Matrix's primary function will be to provide consulting and technology solutions to the Belt and Road Development Research Center. One Belt, One Road Initiative is the world's largest mega project in history, covering 68 countries and 65% of the world's population. Its goal is to reestablish the modern day Silk Road. This strategy underlines China's push to take a larger role in the global affairs of the China Center Trading Network. 
Matrix will bring its expertise in the blockchain and AI technology to help manage the next generation of roads and transport systems, including the many IoT devices required to manage such a vast system. Matrix also boasts a multi-chain structure. It will have the ability to run a public and private chain on the platform. It also allows the integration and interoperability of public chains being completely public and private chains being coordinated with security access features and control mechanisms. There are three major groups of users that Matrix believes that their platform will target. The computing facility. This allows for the infrastructure of providing AI services, smart contract execution, application releases, and transaction processing. Application providers. These are the Matrix services to customers. Matrix applications fall under three categories. The high-end AI applications as in industry data analytics and large-scale learning tasks. Number two is autonomous execution of highly complex smart contracts that require human intervention. And number three is enforcing regular smart contracts to ordinary tasks. And lastly, customers. Matrix states it has four major types of customers. Owners of computing power who can earn rewards through mining and renting out computer power. Users of computing power who need to use Matrix computing power to offer their own AI services and applications. Application providers who develop and publicize applications on the blockchain for general users. And ordinary users who purchase applications and services on the blockchain. As of right now, because the project is an ERC-20 token, it does not have a dedicated wallet. It can be stored on any Ethereum address. That brings us to present day. Currently, MAN sits at number 177 on Live Coinwatch with a market cap value of 20 million. If you're interested in buying the tokens, you can do so on Huboy Global, ETHFINIX, CoinEgg, LBank, KuCoin, and others. As far as partnerships go, the list is quite long, but I'll just mention a few. They partnered with the international digital asset company, IDA, which is an asset digitization and tracking company. IDA holds approximately $3 billion in U.S. dollars worth of assets in the form of natural resources. The partnership between IDA and Matrix allows the resources to be further digitized using the Matrix blockchain. They also have a partnership with Bitmain to help eliminate any possibilities of ASICs mining power attacks that could possibly pose a threat to the system. Matrix and Bitmain are also working on the development of an AI chip related to their project. Beijing Cancer Hospital Matrix has teamed up with the hospital to focus on an image-based medical diagnosis system. Matrix AI Engine will eventually be able to quickly identify and recommend treatment for specific diseases. While the project seems ambitious with the integration of a working AI in so many areas, the AI part is actually already done. Matrix now really only has to deliver a working blockchain solution. Matrix has recently finished its testnet launch and supports basic transactions. AI application tests and a handful of dApps Working with auto-coding, intelligent contracts, and several other surprises are what's coming up in the future. Their source code has been published for all to see on their GitHub. Matrix has also developed their own version of a hardware wallet, which will evolve as a digital asset platform, providing multiple services and business models, including exchange, docking, asset custody, and a couple other things. What's coming up that we have to look forward to? On their roadmap, they have a few things listed. The full mainnet is set to launch in December 2018, which is obviously right around the corner. The Matrix mining machine is set to launch sometime before 2019. March 2019, which on the roadmap they've dubbed the Age of Civilization, um, that has deployment of the AI-secured intelligence smart contracts planned. In December of 2019, which is the Age of Wonder, will give us the deployment of mining facilities and big data applications. On to the pros. They have incredible team with pretty amazing experience. AMD, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Dell, Google, Facebook. So they've got some pretty heavy hitters. This is kind of a neutral one. They've got a very lofty technological goal, but if they can pull it off, I see the project making a really positive impact on the space. I like their hybrid consensus protocol. I think long-term, strictly proof-of-work projects may run into a problem with sustainability, so having the hybrid aspect, I think, is a very strong attribute. On to the cons. The roadmap is quite long. While they have the AI portion already, they need to create the second half of the project, which is the blockchain side. I don't mention this because I believe it will be a hurdle, I just mention it because first mover advantage is very important in the space, so timing of these things is also very important. Assigning 25% of the total tokens to the team is a little high, but if you do consider that they're using this to create foundation for the ongoing development of the platform, they want it to grow and develop well after its initial launch, as I mentioned before. Also that I mentioned before too, is that this is the only time I've ever seen money or funds assigned for grants and scholarships. Final thoughts. I like the project. I'm impressed by their partnerships that they already have. I think they have a very strong team. And as I mentioned before, I like the fact that they are a hybrid coin and I think that's super important. I do wish that the roadmap wasn't so far out, but it's understandable because they have such a lofty technological goal. And I believe that 2019 is going to be a great year for this space in general, but also more specifically for this project. All right, people, that wraps it up for me today. I wanna to thank everyone for watching and for the support as always, and I will see you guys next time.
Ah, so you've gotten to the end of the video, huh? You must be devastated. Well, don't worry. If you're looking for more content to watch, you can go check out my other playlists over there and get your crypto fix. As usual, thanks for watching my channel.